Final Frontier by Brian Doyle. It is the rare soul who remembers particular lines from scripture for reasons other than professional advancement or private absorption. But I remember, even as a child, being totally riveted by a certain order, blunter, saltier lines that made me elbow my wry patient dad. Like, be kind to your father even when his mind goes. Or, the ones where the Christos isn't so much godlike as he is a rattled guy. Such as when he rolls and shouts, who touched my clothes? After he felt the power leave him. What a phrase. One of those lines for me has always been, Blessed are the poor in spirit. I heard it for the first time as a child, of course, at Mass, late in the morning, drowsing between my alpine dad and Beloey mother, in a pew filled with brothers, seated with parental buffers so as to reduce fisticuffery, and like everyone else, I was puzzled and nonplussed. Wasn't the whole point to be rich in spirit? How could you be bereft spirit-wise, but get a backstage pass to the kingdom of heaven? What was that about? Was it a major serious printer's error no one had noticed all these years? Was it supposed to be peer in spirit or something artsy like that? Diligent school teachers subsequently explained the phrase to me, and my gentle wise parents explained it, and learned university professors explained it, and able scholarly writers explained it, and I got the general idea. The word poor there is better understood as humble, but humble never really registered for me, because I was not humble, and had no real concept of humble until my wife until my wife married me which taught me a shocking amount of humility and then we were and then we were graced by children which taught me a stunning amount about humility and then friends of mine began to wither and shrivel and die in all sorts of ways including being roasted to death on september 11th and i began slowly and dimly to realize that humble was the only final, truly honest way to be in this life. Anything else is ultimately cocky, which is either foolish or a deliberate disguise you refuse to remove for complicated reasons perhaps not even known to you. Of course, you do your absolute best to find and hone and wield your divine gifts against the dark. You do your best to reach out tenderly to touch and elevate as many people as you can reach. You bring your naked love and defined courage and salty grace to bear as much as you can with all the attentiveness and humor you can muster. This life is after all a miracle and we ought to pay fierce attention every moment as much as possible. But you cannot control anything. You cannot order or command everything. You cannot fix and repair everything. You cannot protect your children from pain and loss and tragedy and illness. You cannot be sure that you'll always be married, let alone happily married. You cannot be sure you will always be employed or healthy or relatively sane. All you can do is face the world with quiet grace and hope you can make a sliver of difference. Humility does not mean self-abnegation, lassitude, detachment. It's more a calm recognition that you must trust in that which does not make sense. That which is unreasonable, illogical, silly, ridiculous, crazy by the measure of most of our culture. You must trust that you being the best possible you matters somehow that trying to be an honest and tender parent will echo for centuries through your tribe, that doing your chosen work with creativity and diligence will shiver people far beyond your ken, that being an attentive and generous friend and citizen will prevent a thread or two of the social fabric from unraveling. And you must do all of this with a certain knowledge that you will never get proper credit for it. And in fact, the vast majority of things you do right will go utterly unremarked. 
humility, the final frontier, as my brother Kevin used to say. When we are young, we build a self, a persona, a story in which we reside, or several cells in succession, or several at once sometimes. When we are older, we take on other roles and personas, other masks and duties, and you and I both know men and women who become trapped in the cells they worked so hard to build, so desperately imprisoned that sometimes they smash their life simply to escape who they no longer wish to be. But finally, I think if we are lucky, if we read the book of pain and loss with humility, we realize that we are all broken and small and brief, that none among us is ultimately more valuable or rich or famous or beautiful than another, and then perhaps we begin to understand something deep and true about humility. This is what I know, that the small is huge, that the tiny is vast, that pain is part and parcel of the gift of joy, and that this is love, and then there is everything else. You either walk toward love or away from it with every breath you draw. Humility is the road to love, Humility, maybe, is love. That could be. I wouldn't know. I am a muddle and a conundrum, shuffling slowly along the road, gaping in wonder, trying to just see and say what it is. Say what is, trying to leave shreds and shards of ego along the road like wisps of litter and chaff.